Guys, I'm here for another interview here at the Philippine Blockchain Week, and it's called the Future Future Proof. Future Proof. Future Proof. Future proof. Or future proof. It's perfect. No, it's Future Proof. I'm pretty sure. Oh. Wait, wait, let's see. <laughs> there we go. Future Proof. Future Proof. Okay. <laughs> So, um, can you give me your name again and your um, title? Yeah, so my name is Arch Abal. I am the Managing Director of the Vana Foundation and one of the co-founders of the Vana Protocol. Okay. Now, tell me first uh, about the protocol. So, the Vana Protocol is about giving people access to their data back. So, right now, big platforms buy and sell and use people's data without their consent. And Vana's changing that. We're allowing people to take their data, put it on chain, and then make money off it and try to actually make income off the data that other companies are already making an income on. You mentioned to me a while ago, uh, offline, that 2% or, you know, all the public data is already there. So, yeah. now you're trying to find a way to, to buy or get the other 98% yeah. or 92%? Yeah, I, I, so I think the bigger, the big challenge right now is that in AI, all of the models like ChatGPT, like Stable Diffusion, all of them, they've used all the public internet already. So all the internet has been used. So we need to find a way to fuel the next step of AI and it's whatever isn't public. And that, you know, what represents public internet is very small, it's about 2%. What represents stuff behind paywalls or your private data is about 98%. And so it's really valuable right now. And companies are selling this data because they know it's valuable. Why can't individuals who actually create the data get a little bit of that as well? And that's what Vana is all about, trying to create these data marketplaces where the individual can be the ones who can provide their data and get some income from it. So data is very valuable right now. That's why there's big data, right? Yes. And, and I've heard about data breaches, like people getting passwords, yeah. or getting you know, all the details from their voting registration, yes. and with the address yep. and get and, you know, compromise passwords and a lot of um, hacks and yeah. everything. Yeah. So that's one way these hackers are getting the data and how somehow they're using that to earn money or, or yeah. do illegal. Yeah, so there was one case that happened yesterday actually in India where the CTO or the chief security and tech officer of an Indian insurance company took everyone's data from the company and sold it for $150,000. And what's the problem right now in the way that we deal with data in Web2 is we make these trust assumptions because these companies are always going to act in our interest. But it's a centralizing closed point in the ecosystem. If we create a decentralized way on blockchain for people to permission their own data and put all of our data on chain, it means that we don't have to do, we, we can do away with these centralizing entities that end up putting our data at risk. So I've heard that, for example, the U.S. company, uh, Facebook is a U.S. company. Yes. So somehow, maybe the people in China are scared of joining Facebook because it might compromise their, their privacy and data. And on the other hand, people, maybe the U.S. I think or some some leaders in the U.S. want to ban TikTok. I think it was Trump. I don't know if they're doing it. <laughs> That because it can also compromise the data of the U.S. citizens and the leaders. Yeah. So that's a real concern, right? Yes, 100%. I think that we take this for granted that we put our data into these platforms and we trust that they will just do the right thing with it. So the governments are certainly warranted in their concern that these platforms can just steal the data. We don't know what happens behind the office walls. But if we end up putting this data on chain and owning it ourselves, permissioning it with our wallets, doing something in a self-custodial or a decentralized way, we put the power back into the people and we do away with these middlemen that we're putting a lot of trust in right now, to be honest. And I don't think that that trust is necessarily warranted. I'm sure you know about the news of someone like who created, uh, for example, a Kanye West song, which Kanye didn't do, but it was uh -huh. an exact replica, or, yeah. and that person made money. <laughs> so yeah. that's how it can happen, right? Now, even Luke Skywalker, the young version came out in yeah. um, the new series of Lucasfilm. So yeah. that's how the technology is now. Yes, 100%. I think in future, when we all have AI agents, when we're all working to... Um, use our agents to help us in our everyday, we need to make sure we're in control of those agents. And Those are your replicated uh, repli AI stuff, right? Yeah, and, and it all starts with data. The difference between my agent and your agent, David, is that my agent will be trained on my data and your agent will be trained on your data. Or 
you can have this different image, but the data will be on the other person. Right? Oh, that yes. can happen to us. Yeah, of course. But like, so the the key difference. I can have a Tom Holland uh, image. But you then can. the data is based it's, on me. It, it can be based on you. Yeah. But whatever it is, whatever that the end product is, yeah. if we don't own our data, we can never own the end product. So it starts with your data. It starts by owning your data. And then whatever is built on that data, you can also own yourself. So it's like having a copyright in your own data. Your on own, your own self. Which is yourself. Your, your, your own, digital like, self. Yeah, it's your digital footprint. It's and then, so how do you get that copyright? So you actually own it. So one of the things that people don't know is when you use a platform, you don't give them ownership of your data. You give them a license to use your data for the platform. You can actually ask any platform in the world through data requests to give you your data back. So you can reclaim that data at any point in time. But you can tell them not to use it anymore? You can. So that's where it's a little bit of an issue because you can tell them not to use it anymore, but the consequence is not using the platform. So if you're prepared not to use the platform, you can certainly take your data away and never use it again. The better solution is if all of these platforms decide to move to this new primitive of, like, if enough people, so one of the examples was Reddit. We did a Reddit data down on Vana a long time ago. And Reddit actually changed its policy because so many people were upset about Reddit selling their data. So if people come together and start to create new ways for us to exchange and use data, we will be in a better place in society because the platforms are going to have to listen to us. And so if we create new infrastructure for data, which is what Vana is about, we could change the world of how we're actually transacting with the data, which right now I believe is unfair for the individual. So how did it become a foundation, the Vana, the Vana Foundation? Yeah, so um, the foundation of Vana, uh, so the Vana Foundation looks after the ecosystem. And the ecosystem is basically a layer one blockchain that allows a user to write a transaction saying, this is my data, it's been validated decentrally, um, and I'm contributing it to this particular tool. Imagine if that was the way that we transacted with our data every day. We could make so much, we could have so much more control over our data, we could own the value of our data. You can sell it, you can use it for your agent. But that's like the problem right now. We put a lot of trust in these centralized entities, and they've also convinced us that we've lost control, and I'm here to tell people that you haven't lost control, we just need to change the system. That's a very good Yeah, yeah, that's what we're about at Vana. Yes. So, how do you protect your identity, identity uh, from identity theft? Yeah. Is that also part of what Ivana's trying to do? Yeah. Like, um, to, for, like to prevent those things? Identity theft, yeah. Um, so, I or mean, data theft. It's more on data theft. I mean, it's also identity because I think your identity is associated with data. Let me turn the question back to you and say, what is that? What, what do you think they should do? How do you protect all of your tokens? So, I, I think, uh, Probably what yeah. You put it in your wallet, right? So your wallet is non-custodial. You don't put it in a bank. Uh, so then you are in control of how your tokens are transferred. Similarly, your data should be in the same way. So right now, we trust these big companies like Facebook, TikTok, etc. with our data as if they're big banks that are actually acting in our interest. But they're not. But they're not. If we were able to make a way, which is what Vana is, of allowing you to control your own data like you do your tokens, that's the new future how we can actually transact with our data in a way where we, we start with the premise that we own the data and it's ours to control. For example, I'm a content creator. Yeah. Uh, I have one million followers in Instagram. Yeah. I base my whole life, I boast to everyone, yeah. that's my career. Yeah. But then Instagram owns it, so they can delete the account anytime they want. Uh -huh. So end of your career, end of your life, right? Exactly, yeah. And so imagine if you took all of that data and all of your hard work and instead put it on chain and tokenize it. Then so it will stay there forever. You can use it and download it anytime. And the only, and yeah, so you can use it. And the most important thing is only you can use it because it's encrypted with your key. So just like in a wallet or a transaction, nobody can use my my crypto because so nobody, nobody can just download it and upload it again no, no not even so for example i'm a youtuber uh, and i am uh, yeah. and i want to put to, to store my videos in your event thing and let's say event because in case youtube you know and sits live or something yeah there's a way for me to just download all my videos and upload it to Ivana platform, their yeah. platform. Yeah, so How do you do that? Do you handle big data, like a large, large mass of data? So we are all about um, self-sovereign identity and self-custody. 
So what a user can do, so I'm a little bit conservative with my data and it sounds like you could be too. A user can actually download that and put it on-prem, so storage that you actually physically have. Or you can actually choose to put it somewhere on-chain as well. Vana doesn't require you to store your data anywhere in particular, but it does require you to store it and then you to decide what to do with it. So when you take your YouTube data from YouTube because you want to protect it, I would recommend doing that anyway, just as a matter of, 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 of like, protecting yourself. But then if you want to use yeah, it on chain, a lot of stuff found. exactly. So put it, take it, take it off chain, or take it off the platform. Vana will allow you to put it on chain, but where where you choose to actually store the data, up to you. So you How can many do, are the options? Where are the options for storing data in the chain, in the on Vana, web tree or whatever? Yeah, so you can so on prem storage, so on device, uh, so in a server or on like a physical device. Interesting fact: um, when they were inventing the internet, they imagined that everybody had would have this little device that would hold all of their data and um, people would walk around with like a little data wallet. The cloud has made that, you know, obsolete, but I think we're gonna go back to that. Oh, yeah. I would love to be able to hold on to like my wallet and my keys and stuff, like my phone. I'm already holding on to a data device right now, and yeah. it's my phone. So maybe like 200 terabytes or something. Something like that, instead of it being all on the cloud. Like I don't know where that cloud right? is. So you, you don't open access to it. No, so that's the first option. That's the most conservative option. On-prem storage of data is really important. But if a user it doesn't particularly care and they just want to monetize their data and they don't care about where they... They can put it anywhere, like IPFS, Google Cloud, um, Dropbox, AWS. It's so expensive. <laughs> depends, yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, although some of the blockchain-based ones don't uh, require that much. Um, oh, yeah? yeah. Can you give me an example so I can research on it? Yeah, so um, I would say, like, if you look at IPFS, if you look at... Um, uh, there is... So IPFS and Filecoin are two that offer decent sized storage to folks that want to put data there. I don't know whether they support uh, personal information data, yeah. but certainly for content, I'm sure they would be happy to take some of your data for you. Um, some of our data dials are using those storage mechanisms, but I mean, if you're really conservative about your data, I would suggest on-prem storage um, on, on device. You mean device? Yeah. But where does Ivana, how does Ivana come in to the port in an on-prem storage? Yeah. How do you... How do you put it in your chain or whatever? Of course. So, some, so say, for instance, you took all your YouTube data, you put it on on-prem. One big hard drive. One hard drive. One massive hard drive. Right now, it's kind of static. It's like this piece of capital that exists somewhere. We allow you to use that capital. So you're able to, through on-chain interactions, take that data and contribute it to somebody who wants to buy it, contribute it to an application, and do other things with that data. So that's what's, that's what's written on-chain, the transaction to use your data as well as the validation function. So one of the most important things when you're trying to bring data together or use it in an application is that it's structured well and that it's yours. And so Vana runs a trusted ecosystem that's able to validate that your data is yours, it is what it says it is, um, and then you can use it freely. With can Vana also find out if someone's using the same exact replica or, or use it before in the past? I think that um, there will definitely be some ecosystem partners that will develop around making sure that uh, there's trust within the ecosystem. So what you're talking about is proof of identity, yeah, proof of ownership. Um, right, uh, each of the data dials on the Vana ecosystem basically deploys their own proof concept, mm -hmm. and that little tag gets uh, associated with your data so that then you can use it throughout the ecosystem. So where's the demo of how Vana works? Do you have a YouTube video or something? Yeah, so go to Vana.org. Um, you'll be able to read up on the protocol there. Uh, you'll also be able to access our Telegram mini app through Vana.org or follow us on Twitter at withvana. Um, you can also go here today and tomorrow. Yes, you can come, here come say at the hi. Podium. <laughs> We've got a bunch of swag, got so much cool swag here. Come say hi. We've also got a party going. Um, and I have Saturday a VIP night. swag here. This guy. See, I'm part of Vana now. <laughs> He's one of us. <laughs> no. Yeah, I believe in your advocacy and your platform. So Thank you. I hope that will help us content creators to store our data and protect it for eternity. Of course. <laughs> yeah. It's important. It's your livelihood. And I think that there's a and lot of... I hope of... I can like, give it to my children so they can use it or something. That's Maybe actually... there's a way to inherit, like give them permission. Of course. That's, um, that's one of the craziest things. Um, being able to do things with your data past, past death is really important. Yes, because uh, our content is very important to us. Yeah. And you mentioned data is now valuable. Very it valuable. Be like gold, or it's like data gold. is like the new oil, especially now. We've used up all the oil. 
Um, so we need to try to find ways to get new oil, and that's from individuals. And platforms are currently stealing your data. We don't want that to happen. We want you to have that ownership. That's why cybersecurity professionals are also very important now. Yeah, or it's a blockchain where you don't even need a professional. It's all on chain, yeah. all transparent. Okay. Yeah. Like, I mean, I think I would love. Like, we have a bunch of cybersecurity experts at Fana, but ideally. This should be a decentralized network. You don't need it because, because it's your, Yeah, it's all on chain. Yeah. Wait, I just one last question about yeah, NFT. Yes. Because I'm kind of confused about the status right now. Yeah. It used to be a big thing with art and everything, but somehow I think not too many people are. I don't see a lot of people talking about NFTs anymore about when it comes to art. Yeah. So what's the status of NFT at the moment? So the problem with an NFT right now is that it's really hard. It's not it's not as composable as a token. So if you have an NFT and I have an NFT that so is associated with my artwork, how am I gonna combine that to create artwork that could be jointly out? We would have to create a new NFT. And so you have all of these kind of NFTs on top of NFTs, which makes it really difficult for an artist to do things. So I would say it works for some art forms, but certainly where it's more collaborative, like it is right now, like if we were to try to NFT this, it would be a little bit of me, a little bit of you. Yeah. That's going to be really hard. But if we do it through data, through tokenization of data, we could combine ours, create a new token, create a way for us to jointly monetize an initiative together on chain. Um, so I think that's why NFTs have gotten a little bit quiet because the artists were finding that they were able to capture their value, but they weren't able to do anything with their value. Oh, so just a one shot, a it's one like photo. one thing, right? But the new one that you're suggesting is something that you can modify and edit. You can't use an NFT in AI. You can use your data in AI. It's more malleable. Yeah, it's, it. it, it, it's attached to something that. So this is you're, what you're suggesting is a tokenized, tokenized version of your data that then you can choose how it's used. You can collaborate with someone else. And you can collaborate with others. I still think there's value in NFTs, and people are doing a lot of innovation. So I would say. Not that dead, but it's no, 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 for sure. But I think that we sort of think conceptually of NFTs as like something the on the wall, and and I think that. That's not helpful in AI where you want to actually create more ways for people to collaborate to create new things. How about AI and uh, crypto? How is that? Because AI, I think, is newer than all these cryptocurrencies, right? So, yeah. for what is the role of AI now when it comes to crypto? Yeah, I think that's and a really, really inter interesting question. Um, so, there's a question of does AI need crypto or does crypto need AI? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you how do they So, interact? I would say there are some use cases for a blockchain that makes sense in the context of AI. For one, for me, data aggregation, bringing people's data together and putting it on chain is one use case. There may be some use cases that don't make sense because sometimes you do need a lot of centralization in order to have enough power to do things. So can AI like help you trade or when to buy, when to when to sell or what to buy? Can they analyze that? How they can because I AI is very smart. They can ask it to do a song, to do a video, a script, or create you know, anything, even a preaching with verses from yeah. the Bible. But can it also say like, tell me when to? You know, buy Ethereum, when buy when to sell Ethereum, when's the right time? Is it capable now to do that? Uh, or will it eventually be capable? I think that there's a couple of barriers. Uh, it doesn't have real-time data. So it's very hard for it to know that. But I think the other barrier is if everybody had that technology, what differentiates a good trader from a bad trader? Obviously, like, people make money on trades because some people win and some people lose. So the thing that will actually change that is the data underlying the model. So it all goes back to data. Real-time data. If it's real-time data, if you're you're training the model on a good trader versus a bad trader, you might have some advantage. But right now, who owns it's that like model? It's like getting an AI to, to go to the casino and gamble for you. Yeah. So if you're if you're already a bad gambler, it's going to be a bad gambler, right? But, yeah, but if it, well, it's based on the mind of the best the best uh, gambler. Should, so this is the question: If it's best, should the mind of the best gambler, should the best gambler have a right to that model? In my opinion, yes, because it's trained on that. What if you're able to buy that gambler mind? Exactly. So eventually, people will be selling their intelligence or yeah. their brain. Yes. So and want. if you buy ten million dollars to get that gambling yeah. mind, then that can win a lot of casinos. If, if, if you can even earn more. Exactly. exactly. So that's how it's like. You know? It starts with data. It starts with you owning that product. Because right now, 
the current system means that nobody is compensated. Only OpenAI or these large language models are compensated when you create this fantastic model, which is actually trained on you or me or anyone else. I wish there's possi it's possible we can upgrade our own mind. Like, uh -huh. I'll buy your mind and yeah. put it in my own physical mind, and it's going to be done through some AI cyber connection. Yeah. And then, you know, suddenly I know everything that you know. I think that would be fantastic. That's, but David, that's possible if... In, how in, much would you sell your mind for to me? Uh, uh, priceless. See? Exactly, priceless. <laughs> so that's the thing. Like, yeah, but eventually there could be a price. There could be a price where you could sell pieces of it. People sell organs now, or they even steal organs. But. <laughs> Let's not go there. I'm not, I'm not down. Yeah, but you know, they're yeah, talking no, about science course. fiction. Of course, yeah. I do think that like... Maybe we can live forever like our consciousness. We can put it in a robot or AI or something. Well, you mentioned like giving it to your ancestors. Like, sort of ancestors, uh, your, your kin, your descendants. Um, like... If my descendants wanted to use all of my, like, say you were around like a family business, yeah. imagine being able to pass down all of that intelligence and yeah. data to your family. Because you can't teach it in, you know, one in, by in, one. You know, so you're you can just bring your own intelligence, yeah. and they can import it somehow through yeah. your system or in through yeah. the AI. Right. Exactly. And that AI can teach, like the, what okay. Iron Man is doing, like, yeah. you know, they're trying to train people. But the problem right now is the owner of that model gets all the upside and you don't. But it falls in the wrong hand. Exactly. <laughs> well, that, do you use ChatGPT? Yeah, I do. I okay, like. so ChatGPT, where is your data going that you're putting into ChatGPT? It's going right into their server. That's the danger. Right. right. Thank you. Thank Bye, you, Dave. everyone. Thank you for the interview, David.